What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to the last episode of the Loft Makeover series where I'm actually moved in, all the furniture is set up, all the little bits and pieces are completed and we're just gonna give you like a quick walkthrough and also explain some of the things that are a bit different from the third update but also talking about the decor, the details, the furniture, and some of the setup items that we've chosen to go with. There's gonna be videos that are gonna cover like the actual final uh, loft series of the living room, the maybe the kitchen if you guys wanna see that, some of the filming setups, and also the office setups upstairs because there is a lot to cover. But this one is just gonna be like the progression since the last update a couple months ago. So to be totally honest, I expected this renovation to be done quite a while ago. I'd say like a couple months at least, but throughout that there's like a few delays here and there on like the railings, uh, just bits and pieces that had to be tuned up, the Wi-Fi was being set up, and also the ceiling was something that was painted last minute. I did a poll over on Instagram and you guys absolutely like went crazy on the voting and it was unanimous that the ceiling should be painted black and I'm pretty happy that I did that because I think it just kind of ties together the whole look of the industrial space. In the future series of like setup makeovers and also condo makeovers, I'm definitely gonna do more polls. So make sure you follow me over on Instagram because that is gonna be where you guys are gonna be able to get involved and see some of the ideas that you've kind of factored into um, come to life in these videos. Make sure you subscribe for the detailed videos of each part of the space and also leave a comment down below if there's anything in particular that you would like me to cover a bit more. So I'm just gonna give you a look at the whole downstairs and main area before we head upstairs and show you some of the furniture choices. But this kind of main living room slash filming set is completely done and so is the kitchen. So the way I kind of had this planned out from the beginning was to have like a small couch to be able to film as like an A-roll spot. There's also a few little lounge chairs, a table that I'm able to set up different flat lays and demonstrations, as well as a TV just for the sake of watching hockey and Formula One. And if I wanted to, we can also just shift this entire thing over and have a drop down for photography sets and also the option to do like a desk setup or just use that wall as like a filming wall that is relatively flexible. Um, so over here is of course the 77 inch OLED TV and on this side it was supposed to be the podcast set but I haven't really been doing the podcast that much lately so we're just going to turn it into an accent wall. It's going to have a few of these ladder shelves, uh, I believe there's still one more that we have to put together and I'm going to put a few pieces of art, display case and try to figure out what kind of decor to put there but I feel like for a background of videos it's going to work very well and in the future if I decide to like shift it around or add more desks then this is an area that is pretty flexible to do so. The other thing you might also notice is that the railings are in on both sides. Uh, you might remember in the last update I was like sitting on the ledge and the ram board is finally off the steps. So I did go with like a stained black finish and one thing that I've noticed and was warned about quite a bit is just how dirty they get. So if you guys are planning to wear shoes in a spot where you have like a high traffic area up the stairs, probably don't do black wood. Uh, doing like a natural wood, maybe walnut, would have been a better idea, but I felt like there was enough walnut in the place, so I decided to go with black steps. And I mean, they look really good and so do the railings, but it's definitely something to sort of keep in mind. So now moving on over to the kitchen, a lot of the major pieces were already done in the last update, but now it's all kind of come together, all the finishing touches are done, and as you can see, we have kept it relatively minimal. The whole intention of this kitchen isn't really to, to cook every single day because I don't really know how to do that, um, but because it's such a big part of the space and one that you can essentially see from all dimensions, it was a priority that we wanted to at least design to the point where it was functional, where I could resell it in the future, but also have this whole area for filming, um, setting up different flat lays, or also just a place where you could sit down and use your computer and obviously eat. So the sink used to be right here. I mentioned that in the first episode, I had it moved over to the side here just to have a nice flat surface and a large piece of stone that doesn't have anything in the way all the way across. The millwork range hood is a touch that I'm definitely gonna do more in the future. And surprisingly, if you guys are looking into kitchens, it is pretty much the same, if not less, in terms of cost compared to like a stainless steel range hood. And I think it looks so much better, more customized, higher end. And that whole one piece quartz backsplash just makes that range hood stick out in the contrasting color. The stone of course is from Cosentino, the Sile Stone lineup, and the combination that we went with is the Calcutta Gold for the backsplash and also the bathrooms, and charcoal soapstone on the countertops. 
It is like a nice dark look, but it isn't too dark. It isn't anywhere close to black. But one thing that you do want to keep in mind is that it does have a cooler tone. So if you're going for that, then this is like a nice neutral new color that they've come out with. And I went with the three centimeter slab with a waterfall wrap around the edge and it was installed by Flowform. The backsplash is two centimeters because it doesn't have to be thick. It's not a workable surface. And by having it a little bit thinner, you at least maximize the countertop space that there is. Uh, for appliances, I went with the KitchenAid. It was a gas stove. There's the only option to go with that. And you guys have obviously also seen the microwave, which is the most used appliance right now, and the dishwasher, which is panel ready and just like a pretty standard, uh, the cheapest panel ready one that I could find. And when it comes to the sink, this matte black one right here is the same one that I used in my place. It is from Blanco, the Sil Granite model, which is super durable. It looks really bold and modern. There's also the faucet from Blanco as well. A lot of this I'm talking about, we've already covered in previous episodes, but when it comes to the decor itself, I tried to keep it relatively simple, but have a few pieces that just add to the space and blend in different areas that we have. Um, so right here, we have this concrete coffee machine. It's from a company called Anza. I'm still trying to figure out how to use it, but because of the exposed concrete over here, which has gotten some mixed opinions on whether it looks good or bad, I decided to keep it because it would have been a little bit complicated to put it over there. It still runs above. So by splitting it up and adding a piece that kind of ties that together with the exposed concrete, um, all of the natural pores and everything on there, I feel like it at least makes that that concrete wall look pretty good. Um, over here we have some other little coffee accessories and I feel like that is a nice tone that connects to the coffee machine and also that wall over there. And when it comes to the shelf, I honestly didn't really know what to do. Just had some cups put um, by Thomas and Birch, which was nice and just a couple candles up there. So I plan to keep this kitchen as minimal as possible. The only thing I plan on adding is maybe like a cutting board leaned against the backsplash and a set of knives. But otherwise, I've got to say the kitchen in general is kept relatively simple and it's going to be used for like a combination of snacks and maybe a little bit of food and a ton of camera gear. So now that we're moved in, one of the most important things is to try to keep the place as clean as possible. And with the construction just wrapping up and even a little bit still going on, it is going to be a little bit dusty, especially in the first couple weeks. So one of the most important tools that we've added to the office is the Dyson V11 Outsize. And huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. And as always, all the links are going to be down below. So the V11 Outsize is a version that a lot of people don't actually know about. It is kind of the improved one of their V11 vacuum, and I've had that in my house since it has come out. So this has all of the same features. Uh, it is actually more powerful. It obviously has a larger capacity. And with the cordless vacuums being more and more popular and people moving away from like built-in vacuum systems in the house that break all the time, this vacuum is gonna be especially popular for anyone who might have like a townhouse or a house where there's a lot more surface area to cover it and you might need better battery life and capacity in one charge. This vacuum also has a maximum runtime of two hours, which is double of what you can get on the V11. And when it comes to capacity, it is 150% larger. So you can probably tell the size is relatively substantial, but it all comes in at a weight at just one pound more. It also has a 25% larger cleaning head and the charge time is exactly the same as the smaller model. Just some of the other features to cover is that it has a screen on the back. You have your eco, you have your regular mode and also the boost mode and that will change the battery life. And it is also adaptive as you go from like smooth surfaces like hardwood floor or concrete and onto rugs and carpet. It will kind of adjust that setting accordingly to get the maximum suction. So for anyone who's looking for a great vacuum and especially to those who have a larger space and want that great battery life and replace your old vacuum, then the V11 Outsize is an option that really makes a lot of sense. As for some of the other fixtures, you guys might know one of my favorite companies is Buster and Punch. They make some great hardware. They also make really nice lighting and high quality decor pieces. It is definitely at the premium price tier, but you're getting amazing quality. It is made in the UK. And the lighting that we went with um, on the wall sconces are a huge improvement from what was there before. I don't really even know what they decided to put there, but I really like the marble finish. I like the exposed bulb that is also LED. And I think the cage just adds, once again, a bit of dimension to it and it comes in a few different sizes and from my retail clothing store I also really plan to use a lot of buster and punch. 
The hardware is also another area that we use Buster and Punch in the den. It has like the nice knurled finish that I've always liked. And some of the other decorations and pieces include the setup for the coffee table. There's a nice brass finish that comes in a few different finishes of silver and also black. And the whiskey glasses kind of go with that whole collection and you can kind of puzzle them together if you would like. Behind me I also have that whiskey cabinet that has one of their light bulbs. It is super high quality in an ebony finish with a velvet on the back. So if you have like some whiskey or anything that you want to display, then it just has like a, a glow that goes through all of that. And just to be able to kind of present that back there as an accent piece, I think goes very nice. So when it comes to the furniture choices, it was a pretty easy choice to go with Rove Concepts. We worked with them in the past and I just love their furniture. We kind of had a mixture of different lineups. Uh, their walnut looks really good. And in fact, the wall behind me is actually based on the same walnut that came from the swatch kit from Rove Concepts because we were sure that we were gonna be using that. So some of the furniture that arrived included this couch right here, which I feel like is a really good size for this kind of space. You don't want something that just becomes a whole lounge because we obviously film here. We want to be able to easily shuffle it around, but it is also fully modular. So if you want to add bits and pieces in the future, then you're totally able to do that. This coffee table right here is also a really elegant look. It is nice and heavy. There's a marble finish on the top and it also comes in ceramic at times. It has a nice mixture of the gray, which ties in with the rest of the color and also the walnut with a nice gold trim that goes around it. And it has two drawers as well. So that just makes it very easy to have some snacks, controllers and, I also really like the TV stand because it has an open bottom that makes the place feel relatively big. On top of that, we also put a 77 inch Sony OLED TV. That was one that was on sale because it is a 2020 model and we picked it up for a price that was like pretty much half of what it was originally listed at when it first came out. And with TVs, I feel like you don't really always have to buy the newest one. You're just watching like sports or playing video games. TVs from the last couple of years are gonna have the capabilities to handle what you would like. But if you are playing next gen games like on the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, then you do wanna make sure it has HDMI 2.1 support to fully take advantage of that. Yeah, I would say the living room looks really, really good. I'm happy with it. The Rove Concepts touch of gold, walnut, and a bit of stone and gray just all come together. And when it comes to the bar stools, I went with the same Arby Carnage stools that I have at my house except in a gray finish for the leather. It also has some walnut to it and I feel like that is just like a good medium of a chair that looks rigid and it holds its shape but is also comfortable and modern. As for some of the side chairs, the pavilion one over here is just like a very classic look and you see it all the time and I feel like for this office it really does go well and beside that we have a Bang & Olufsen speaker that actually sounds really good but I originally admittingly bought it just for the looks. Over here we also have a brown chair that I'm a huge fan of, also from Rove Concepts, and it just like has a bit of a classic look. Uh, a lot of the stuff here is more minimal, um, but I feel like there are some classic ties to it, and you also notice that in like the kitchen. But overall, Rove Concepts is still my favorite furniture company. Definitely go ahead and check out their stuff, and in future projects, we hope to still use some of their furniture. So another big part of the space is the desk setups. And one of the big reasons why I wanted a two-story loft is because I wanted to have the desks and the filming space completely isolated from each other. Because in the past, from filming in my house, I've been filming in spots that I was either living or working in and it was just always a bit of a mess and there isn't just like a place that we can set up and focus on filming alone. So when I found the space, I figured it would be a really good area to put all the desks. You've got four of them in total. They're all the same size, same layout. And you've also got a gear chest in the back with all of the camera equipment, your Wi-Fi and networking setup maybe even some storage in the future. And everything up here can at least be hardwired through ethernet so we have no issues in terms of internet speed. So what actually happened up here, if you guys have been following along the series, is that that corner where there's a bit of a bulkhead is where the shower used to be. Uh, there's no door to the bathroom, so we took out the shower and um, added a barn door, turned the bathtub into a shower, and just, kept this as a work only area where everyone can do administrative work, video editing and have meetings and all that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. It was probably the most pain free portion of this entire renovation, relatively straightforward. Carpet tile went in, which is nice and durable. But beginning with the desks themselves, these are kind of like the centerpiece for all of our setups. It is the Ergonophis Sway, which is a walnut desk. It also comes in many different finishes, um, birch, maple, and also just like the uh, 
melamine finishes as well in black, white, all the colors that you would probably be considering for a desk. But the one that we went with is the Sway Desk in a walnut finish. Everything is pretty easy to assemble as well. It all came in, um, everything was pre-drilled, all the parts were included. We just put it together over a weekend and they were ready to go. The Sway Desk is of course sit stand, so you just need to head over to it and press the button and it will start to go up and down. You also have different options to um, preset the memory settings, but yeah, there's really not much to say. I know standing desks have been very popular and especially from the work from home period, I've seen a huge rise in people buying wood desks. So if you guys are looking for the highest quality wood desk, then Ergon Office has a great lineup of desks and also cabinets I can go with it in many different finishes. So on top of these desks, everybody has kind of their own little setup and we might actually do a video where each person on the team can customize their desk specifically and you guys can let me know which one is your favorite. Um, I personally have the Messiest desk usually. I definitely had to clean it up a little bit. Chris has his little editing station over there, but each desk right now has a leather mat just to protect it. I think it has a nice black contrast to it. I really like the wood that peeks through and we can kind of see that and have a lot of walnut that ties together in this space. But I do like to use a leather desk cover just because there's just a lot of things going on and I don't really want to scratch it. Um, so yeah, you guys can take a look at each of these setups as of now. We just moved in about a week ago, so it's not like fully ready yet. We're waiting for like new computers to come out. Um, Apple's iMac maybe, the, uh, the M2 model or M1X, maybe the Mac Pro. And I still have my whole setup at home where I edit the videos. But otherwise, here are the chairs as well. These are the Herman Miller Aerons, the new edition. Had them custom ordered. They were supposed to take forever, but they actually came pretty quickly. Um, the chrome base, everything else is relatively standard on it with the armrests. And behind me is a Husky shelf. And I was trying to decide whether to go with like a kitchen cabinet uh, and just have like a bit of millwork done that looks maybe a little bit better, but I decided to just go with a tool chest because it has like all of the different lining and everything is just ready to go. You can lock up the whole cabinet. And the reason why I also went with this one is thanks to Edward Lee because he showed this in his video and it had like power outlets on the back, on the side as well. So you can charge all the camera equipment, organize it very effectively. And you also have a bit of a workbench up top that you can flip open and access some of your tools and put together the camera builds. In total though, one thing that you should definitely know is that it weighs 500 pounds. So you're gonna need a lot of friends to help you like get it up the stairs. It is super hard to move. So there it is. And I think for the price of $1,300 Canadian, which is 900 to 1,000 in the US, it is a great deal for what it is because custom millwork would have costed thousands of dollars. Another little piece that I had added to it was just uh, made by Matt, who is also working on the den downstairs. And he also did the wooden slats. And we just had him build like a bit of a cubby for the router because we didn't know where to put it. You couldn't really put it up here because the hinge had to open. But yeah, the router lives right here. The modem is behind that. You have like a bit of a water station. And it's just a really good way to access a lot of the power that is on this side without having to see all of the cables. So yeah, that is our Husky shelf. And overall, I've got to say, I'm super happy with the setup. And with the rest of the space looking more like a house or like a lounge, up here is business first. Uh, we have our, our tool case where all the camera equipment goes and I'm gonna try to, my best to at least keep it a little bit organized. So now moving on from the main area, we are back in the den, which is kind of like an odd shape and I was trying to decide what to do over the past few months. And I feel like I've come up with an idea. And I mean, it's already in progress, it's almost done. We're in a bit of like a, a bubble right now just to keep the dust out of the rest of the space. But uh, Matt is actually building this kind of display shelf and cabinets. Uh, he was also the one who built the slatting, the walnut that all turned out very nicely. But the idea behind this is that previously, this is where the TV setup was because of the fireplace out in the living room. So by building a shelf right here, it was able to cover like the weird bulkheads and like the odd shape with the half split and all that and just build it into a singular unit that looks like it's all one piece. It gives you a bit more storage on the bottom. You can put some decorations and picture frames and all that sort of stuff. But I plan to just like put some props and have some posters on this side and actually use this area as my main filming set. So we have this large desk here that is the Ikea sit stand. You can kind of just like wheel it up and down. It's not too expensive. And 
we can probably film from where the camera is right now and even on that side with a secondary camera. But the purpose of using the den for filming is to have a controlled set. And one of the things that I wanted with the office is just to have at least one set that we can film at in any time without any like variables coming from the lighting outside. So if it's morning or night or it's a rainy day, overcast, I can just come back here and film a video that looks the same every single time. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, almost done. It just needs a few trim pieces, but the sliding was something that I saw in a photo and put together like a really crappy Photoshop render for Matt. And he was able to kind of bring it to life, use the same paint as the walls. And I just wanted to go with like a light finish because the rest of the place has kind of the monochromatic and walnut accent, which is obviously on the darker side. So this is gonna be done by the next time you guys see uh, the following episode where I give you a tour of the entire space, but this den was once like just a spot that we weren't sure if we we're gonna use for like storage or whatever it was, and instead turned it into a fixed set. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next thing. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for following along on this series of the Loft Makeover. It has been a huge project, and you guys may have seen about mid last year when I first got the keys. It was a place that had character, but it wasn't my style at all. And I know a lot of people have talked about the fact that I may have taken all the character out of it, but I feel like just to modernize it, I want to just redo everything and make it the way that I would like for just like a nice industrial look uh, for an office space and through time hopefully add a bit of character and personality to it because as you can probably tell right now it is just very black and white there's no plants there's no paintings we're still working on that um, but I'm pretty happy with the way that it has come together there's a lot of things that we learned on this project both in terms of budgeting timeline expectations and all that kind of stuff that I'm going to take over to future projects and hopefully improve on that but yeah, this is gonna be our production space for hopefully at least the next couple years. And I just wanna say a huge thanks to all the companies that have kind of worked together on this to add some nice touches of furniture, the kitchen, and also to you guys who have watched the series, followed along, and left a whole bunch of feedback on the previous episodes. So as always, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.